Welcome to Mimi's Math Channel. Today, I will discuss mutually exclusive and inclusive events using addition rule. So before I start, let's go over what it means. Mutually exclusive is where you cannot have something happen at the same time. Inclusive means that two events can actually occur at the same time. If I am talking mutually exclusive, then I'm going to use this addition rule. This symbol, the union symbol, is used when we're using the word or in a word problem. So it's the probability of A plus the probability of B. For inclusive events, it's just an altered version of the addition rule where you still have the probability of A plus the probability of B. However, you're now going to subtract where they intersect. So that's what this symbol is, intersection. And in a word problem, you will see the word and. For example, one, a pair of dice is rolled. What is the probability that the sum of the dice rolled is either a nine or a three? So you have to ask yourself, so when I'm rolling the dice, is it possible for me to have a sum of both a nine and a three? If not, that means that it's mutually exclusive. This is what this problem would look like. You want to just set it up based off of what you know. Well, if I'm rolling the dice, first off, I have to understand that I have a total of 36 outcomes. Why? Because if I had one dice and I rolled a one, the second dice, I could roll one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then I would just keep doing that for each die. So the first die, I can roll two, same thing, three, same thing, four. And if you keep doing that, that's going to give you 36 outcomes. But for this situation, we're only looking for where would the sum of the dice equal nine or three. So for the nine, we know that we can add three and six for one die. And then maybe the first die is now six and the second one is three. Then you can have the first die as four, the second is five, and then the first die is five and the second is four. So those are my sums of nine. So out of the 36 outcomes, there's four. Then I see the word or. So that tells me that I'm going to add. I still have 36 outcomes for my dice. And so what I want to do is try to find the sum where it's going to equal three this time. My first die could be one and my second two, or my first die can be two and my second one. So I have two this time. And when I go ahead and add that up, that's going to give me six out of 36. But you always want the simplified version. So I can divide both of those by six, which leaves me with one over six. And again, I told you in another video, but if I started out with fractions, then I want to end with my answer as a fraction, unless the direction say otherwise. So for example, two, I'm talking about marbles. And it says that a bag contains 25 marbles, 10 yellow, 13 orange, and two green. A marble is drawn from the bag at random. What is the probability of getting an orange or a green marble? So I can go ahead and start out my first fraction with 25 as my total, because that's how many marbles are in the bag. And out of that, I'm asked about orange. So there's 13 13 orange. So 13 out of 25. And then it says or. So that tells me to add because I'm using addition rule or green. So how many green do I have? I have two out of 25. So again, this is a mutually exclusive event because I can't pick both an orange and a green at the same time. So therefore, this is the addition rule and I don't have to subtract anything out. I just go ahead and simplify it. And that's going to reduce to three over five because I can divide that 15 over 25 by five. So the next example, Rue Valley High School has 98 teachers. Of the 42 female teachers, eight teach math. One seventh of all of the teachers teach math. What is the probability that a teacher is a woman or teaches math? So now in this case, I can actually use the inclusive addition rule because you can be both a woman as well as teach math. So that is called inclusive. The first two were mutually exclusive. You couldn't do both at the same time. It's asking what is the probability that a teacher is a woman? And that's going to be 42 out of all of the teachers, which were 98. So 42 females right there. And it says or, so again, addition rule plus and teaches math. Well, it says that one seventh of all the teachers teach math. So that means one seventh of means to multiply all 
all the teachers, there's 98 teachers. This is really 98 divided by seven, which leaves me with 14. 14 out of 98 teachers actually teach math. That's what this says. So what I'm looking for is a teacher who not only teaches math, but is also a woman. So I've already accounted for that in this 14. So I'm going to have to subtract out the overlap. And that will be eight. I was told in the word problem out of 42 female teachers, eight teach math. So I'm going to go ahead and deduct that. And once I simplify this, this is 24 out of 49. So for example four, use the Venn diagram which shows the transportation methods used by 162 travelers to find the probability shown if a traveler is selected at random. You might wanna make it a habit of color coding. That is helpful when you're trying to find your probability. I'm trying to find the probability of a ferry or a train. So what I wanna do is look at my circle, the entire circle for the ferry. And I wanna add all of those numbers up. That's going to be 47 out of of 162, which was given in the word problem. And then the symbol or tells me that I'm using the addition rule. So I'm going to go ahead and add. And it also asks about the train. So now I'm going to go to the train and I'm going to look at this circle and I'm going to add all of those numbers. So once I add all of those numbers, that's going to be 80 out of that same 162. But what I noticed is that I had an overlap between the ferry and the train of 27, which was this 11 plus 16. So this is again where the color coding comes in handy. So the pink and the blue were here and the pink and the blue are here for the ferry and the train. So I have to subtract that because I counted it twice. So 27 out of 162. This is going to give me 100 out of 162. However, when I simplify it, it's 50 out of 81. And that's my final answer. For the next one, I have a ferry or rental car. So I already know the ferry because we, it's going to be the same thing. That's going to be 47 out of 162. I see the or for union and then rental car this time I look at the green circle and I count all of the numbers that are in it and when I do that that's going to give me 94 out of that same 162. I notice there's an overlap between the ferry and the rental car right here. So where the pink and the green meet that's going to be 13 plus 11. So I'm going to subtract 24 out of here and once I simplify that's 13 out of 18. So this is the train and this time I'm using an intersection sign ferry or train and rental car. So first let's look at train and ferry. The train and ferry are right here. So where the pink and the blue met. So that's going to be a total of 27, 11 plus 16. We see the union sign, which is or. So we're going to add. And now we're going to look at the train and rental car. So where the blue and the green meet, and that's going to be here, 11 plus eight. And so that gives me 19 out of that same 162. And there was an overlap where all three of them met. So the green, the pink, and the blue are all at 11. So I want to go ahead and deduct that 11 out. And that is going to leave me with a probability of 35 out of 162. That's my final answer. Thumbs up, subscribe, have an awesome day.